All right, g'day guys, welcome back to another Just The Tips. This time, El Birthday Edition, as they say in Spain. It's my birthday, I'm 28. Happy birthday. Yeah, nah, just kidding. Happy birthday, Jersey. How's, ah. it, how's it feel to be in your 20s? Yeah, ready to fucking smash it and be the greatest person I can be. This week, I don't even want to go through our tipping results. Uh, I think we got four each, and I, I got a thing saying respectable tipping because I think it shows like <laughs> yeah. it shows like what everyone else gets. So we we'll weights against that, but yeah, uh, yeah I am four hundred and thirty nine jersey out yeah. of a comp of seven hundred and nine. This is getting more and more embarrassing. I got the Cats Lions game wrong, which are uh, in hindsight, obviously, I should have tipped the Lions, but I, I had faith in Geelong with the form they had. And I said on my stream, I said, I'm going to tip the Dockers now that because I, I need to get a tip right after that one wrong. Getting that one wrong. Talked myself into tipping Collingwood with the form they are in. Mm. Tip Collingwood. Yeah. So, other than that, uh, yeah, couldn't really fault it, but yeah. My biggest regret was tipping the Eagles over the Dogs. And yeah. Like, after it, it sounds silly, but I was like, what, what actually made me think we were going to win? Man? Yeah. <laughs> dogs are so much better. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so we'll take a look at the results. I'm 77. You're 10 tips ahead of me. Uh, with 87 and you're still 53rd uh, sliding down a little bit but uh, still still a very good position overall aiming for a top 30 finish yeah the fair enough yeah me too and uh, dad <laughs> is uh, in 117th so he's catching up a little bit he's uh, only two tips behind you so um, having a very good season unfortunately uh, and this is making me question the wisdom of doing a footy tipping show when I'm the worst footy tipper in the world <laughs> <laughs> we'll shout out the weekly winner this week it was King Josh who tipped seven correct tips out of nine that's so the first time there hasn't been like a a full round of correct tips it's for the winner. About, yeah, it's usually an eight or nine, but the seven is uh, yeah, it's a pretty moderate score. But well done, King Josh. It was a tough round of tip. Um, yeah, doing really well. The tipping leader overall is ESPN six one six six three one seven with ninety four overall correct tips, which is outstanding. Remember, if you do change your name uh, on ESPN, you can actually get a proper shout out rather than just the generic ESPN. But uh, well done on a very good season. You're seventeen tips ahead of me. That is disgusting. <laughs> you should start a channel. And same again, the fan. Fantasy leader is Shuckers slash James English with an average of 2001. Absolutely killing it. Got a bit of a stranglehold on the top spot at the moment, but there's still a long way to go. Druzy, it's come to my attention that uh, 56% of people who watch my channel are not subscribed. Or at least that was the case in June. It's been a great month for YouTube. This has actually been the second best month I've ever had on YouTube. But subscribership hasn't really, you know, it's just, it's, it's gone all right. It's gone all right. We need to make the commitment. So if you do watch the videos and you do enjoy the channel and you haven't subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you did. Let's get into the video. Football. All right. So the first game of the round is a, don't say Clash of the Titans. Don't say Clash of the Titans. Gold Coast versus Richmond. Is this Thursday? Uh, Stadium. Yeah, Thursday night. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Suns lost by nine points to the Roos down in uh, Tasmania, which uh, would have hurt, to be honest. Anytime you lose to the bottom team, it hurts. And for me, on form, worst team in the competition right now. Uh, but they're coming up against Richmond, who <laughs> put in probably the worst performance of any Contender this year, actually, that's probably harsh. A few of my own clubs' uh, performances yeah. this year come to mind. But any any time you lose to St Kilda by forty points, a team that's horribly out of form, and uh, you score your lowest score in something like sixty years, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Stinky. Yeah, it's getting a little bit dangerous territory at the moment for the Tigers. Um, obviously, they're seven and seven, and they probably can't really lose too many more games mm. uh, the rest of the year to um, to really be a feature in September. So, with that in mind, is there any chance of an upset at Metricon Stadium? This <laughs> no, week? because Gold Coast, as you said, worst side in form in the comp at the moment Richmond are going to bounce back um, they've played this ground plenty of times in the last 12 months that's true pretty pretty strange performance from Richmond I don't think anyone saw them kicking two goals yeah. for that game so um, yeah one of the more strange shocking results of the season um, I'll, I'll back Richmond to win this one comfortably by 38 points they were obviously struggling without Nan Curvis last week with uh, Ryder and Marsha just giving all the mm. Saints inside mids like yeah. first use and yeah just got absolutely butchered some injuries as well Noah Bolter potentially out uh, with an ACL I don't know if that's confirmed broad yet. as well yeah broad so yeah a bit of adversity but it's a good time to play Gold Coast I agree they'll flat track this they'll win by yeah 47 points fuck Gold Coast suck the second game of the round the Friday night is a good juicy contest you got Geelong hosting Essendon at GMHBA mm. Stadium uh, it's a rare sight to see the Cats get battered in the way they did against the Lions I think they were just one of the form teams of the comp going into that game with a winning streak of six which is now shattered they conceded the first five couldn't fight back some players that did really well against the Dogs uh, were just not a feature Joel mm. Selwood uh, I think had like 13 touches um, was held by uh, Devin Robertson uh, Tom Stewart um, the master man couldn't 
really be an impact on the game. On the other side of the ledger, Essendon challenged Melbourne. Um, they played pretty well, only lose by 11 points. Uh, I know the umpiring was a bit of a feature of that game uh, if you watch the Drew Footy Show on Drewsy's channel, uh, but ultimately came up short. And they've, they've actually only beaten one team higher than 12th this year. So they've sort of been that middle ground where they just can't quite beat the teams better than them other than their one win against West Coast. I rested in a decent shot here, having said all that. If you stopped halfway through then, I'll, I would have said, I'm going to tip Essendon in an upset, but then you're like, and really? they haven't beat anyone above them this year. So I'm like, okay. Just, no, yeah, they, they could get an upset. Mm. I can see it. They're playing good footy at the moment. They're, uh, they, they don't give up Essendon. They're always in the game, I think, this season. Um, yeah, that's true. They've been one of the more positive signs this season. Haven't really had too many... Um, Real disappointing results, but Geelong at GMHVA. I mean, it's a tough ask. I think they played there in the preseason, and it was a yeah, thriller. it was not pretty that, close. Yeah, not that that really matters too much, but yeah, I think at least they played the ground all right. Yes, yeah. this is gonna be a tight game. You reckon? Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll tip Geelong because it's a safe tip. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll go Geelong to win this one by eighteen points. Geelong maybe slipping, but they always just find a way. I've only lost one game. I, I think they'll. Uh, I think they'll win this by 24. The third game of the round is another potentially good one. Depends which GWS shows up. You've got Melbourne hosting the Giants at the MCG. The D's fought off a pretty brave Essendon. Uh, they've troubled quite a few teams this year. Mm -hmm. Essendon not always beating the better teams, but Melbourne obviously showed maturity to win, and we talked about it on the Drew Footy Show. Uh, not in the best form. Maybe going through a minor slump, but mm. still getting the results uh, with another four points chalked up, and Petrarca and Oliver were the best, unsurprisingly. Uh, GWS hosted this game at the MCG uh, last week against Hawthorne and lost a crucial game could have been in the top eight by the end of the round and failed to get the chocolates uh, the Hawks played well but ultimately a very poor result surely the D's have no trouble here yeah they shouldn't do GWS losing to well not losing to North Melbourne but dropping points to North Melbourne and Hawthorne mm. you can't be taken seriously as a side if you're doing that I mean mm -hmm. come on uh, Melbourne yeah they, they, their defence is rock solid I don't think GWS are yeah, going to win this game. I'd be, be really shocked if they did, to be honest. Yeah. Someone that I've mentioned on the Drew Footy show as well, so go check that out because it's as good. What? <laughs> Shut up. Leave it out. Leave it out. Um, James Jordan, I thought, was one of the best on the ground for Melbourne the other day. And uh, Cade McDonald raves on about him a lot as one of their, their mm. midfield bulls. So, um, yeah, another one to watch out for. I reckon Melbourne will win this game pretty comfortably, though. I'll go by 29 points. Yeah, I was thinking, like, 25. Melbourne are comfortably better side here. If GWS can't show up against Hawthorne when this season, they've got, a, like, a really good opportunity for their season. I don't think they're going to beat mm. Melbourne. So, yeah, comfortable win for the Ds. How much did Drew Footy show? It's as good. <laughs> <laughs> Next game, we travel down to Adelaide Oval. Or do we establish this? This is up to the Adelaide Oval. It is, up from it? Melbourne, yeah. Yeah. Up from Melbourne. God damn it. Uh, Adelaide is hosting the Brisbane Lions at Adelaide Oval. The Crows had the chance to beat a team sort of, well, uh, below them on the ladder, but still mm. get an away win against a team that, uh, yeah, that was realistically a gettable win, and they couldn't quite get it done. Uh, I think at one point they trailed by 34 points as well, then they brought it back to 10, and I think they missed their first six shots at goal, which ultimately proved costly. So to be honest, not a terrible loss in the big picture, just because I think Adelaide Adelaide have uh, shown a good spirit this yeah, year. It's not sure. like uh, there's no narrative around, oh, what a bad loss. Uh, it's just, you know, sometimes that happens. They're developing. Uh, on the other side of the ledger, you've got Brisbane, who butchered the Cats, um, which is a good sort of, I guess, mental win in, mm -hmm. in a way. Obviously got butchered in the um, the prelim last year. So to beat the Cats, a team they're likely going to feature in, uh, against in September, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a really good uh, win. And obviously the implications on the ladder itself as well, really, really important for the Lions. They keep the first five goals of the game. Controlled proceedings. Dev Robertson yeah. was fantastic. Kept Selwood to 13 touches. Uh, so plenty to talk about there for Brisbane. But I think Adelaide are good enough to win this at home. If yeah. they can beat Melbourne at home, they can beat Brisbane. Can they? Uh, I think Brisbane are one of the most consistent sides in the AFL and if not the best informed side in the competition at the moment. So I think they'll win this game. Dev Robertson has been going to the best midfielder of every team Brisbane have played against. He played on fire from when he played against them. Mm. I haven't been watching too much off Brisbane but every time I see Dev Robinson he's just going to be such a good player for them for such a long time mm. um, absolute draft seal everyone knows that but uh, yeah Adelaide could have won that game against Carlton in the last quarter Lockie Scholl running into an open goal from about 10 metres out and just scuffed it uh, Tex Walker kicked I think three goals four or something like that they had more scoring shots than Carlton they should have won they're a hard side to beat at home this could be a good game but ultimately I think Brisbane are one of the best sides in the competition I think they'll win this one by 23 
I agree with all that for the, all those reasons. Brisbane are very uh, consistent. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're sort of like uh, what I said about Port last week. You can sort of predict how they're going to go. Mm-hmm. And Brisbane generally, they don't have too many shockers. So yeah. other than round one against Sydney, but that's, they're yeah. few and far between. So you'd expect Brisbane to get the job done here. I'll say 17 points. Next up, we have potentially one of the games of the year. Well, actually, I say it half jokingly, but Fremantle versus Carlton has been two of the better finishes uh, in previous seasons at Optus. So Fremantle are coming off one of the better wins of their season um, against the bottom four Collingwood. No, I'm just kidding. Collingwood obviously playing uh, pretty decent football, having just knocked off Melbourne. It was a good contest from start to finish, and Fremantle didn't, you know, sort of uh, fold, falter, yeah, fold, whatever. Um, they uh, they ended up hanging on to what is a pretty good win. It was a seesawing battle, and um, apparently Sean Darcy had his career high disposals. Probably one of the bigger wins this year for you has probably been the form of Sean Darcy out of out of the next generation. He's, He's uh, just resigned. Yes, exactly. Exactly, he's just doing really well. So, um, Lobb and Schulz also kicked three goals each. Another mm-hmm. promising sign that you had a, a tall forward, and by contrast, Kyle, Collingwood couldn't buy a goal out of their forwards. Yeah. The Blues, on the other hand, had a bit of a, I don't know about significant win, but it was a win they really needed to have, and they get the critics off their back for one week at least. Um, Sam Walsh ran three and had 38 touches. Weedering was prominent. Uh, Williams also bobbed up for mm. a goal on 26 touches, so they were pretty good. Given the trauma of the last two oh, times man. Carlton have came here, how confident are you that Fremantle are going to win this It game? can't happen again, Jesse. <laughs> it can't. It simply can't. We're in much better form than Carlton, and we're playing at home. Mm. I mean, this should be a no-brainer for Freo to pick up the four points here. But it's been like that every time they've come over. We've been in better form, and we just haven't showed up against Carlton. They've had our number, and they might just have a bit of a mental edge over Freo. Um, we'll have Fife back in next week, yeah. so that's going to be an absolutely mammoth in. But I don't know who dropped from that side after that game. Obviously, Fife will come in, probably for Brett Bewley, who replaced him. But he kicked two goals and had the best game he's had for Freo last week. Solid on every line, and yeah, players played with a lot of heart for once as a whole unit. It wasn't just a couple of players leading the way. Every player was, yeah, a real, real good Real good job. And yeah, Carlton, I mean, they've been all right last week. I mean, they, they beat Adelaide. So, I mean, like, yeah, mental edge. They could could try to, to sneak something. They do play well against you. They, they do. They butchered you earlier this year. Yeah. By far, Carlton's best performance of the year. So. Yeah, and our worst. Yeah, so maybe they just match up well on you. Yeah, maybe, potentially. This will be a fiery game, I think. I think the both sets of teams know what this game means to the fans. Um, Carlton have a big supporter base over here, although COVID's fucked that up. So we don't know how what, where this is going to be or how many fans are going to be there. That's a good point. I didn't mention that. There's a chance this game's in Victoria. Yeah, hopefully not though. Uh, that'll play into the tip. But I'm going to tip the Dockers this week. Yeah. Come on, boys, to win this one by 76 points. <laughs> nah, I'll go. I'll go. 27. Yeah, well, that's a pretty handy win. I I agree, and I think Fremantle will lift themselves for this game. They're they're going to be eyeing this off with a lot more emotion than maybe Carlton. Mm. Um, and I just think Fremantle are a better side. The only the only vulnerability is that Carlton seem to play well against Fremantle, yeah. and that, that might be strategic or whatever, but Fremantle will win this by 17 points. Next up, we venture south to, uh, to Marvel Stadium. <laughs> Geography. Hawthorne playing Port Adelaide uh, at Marvel Stadium. The Hawks won a surprise game over the Giants, a game that they kind of hosted, even though they were away wearing white shorts. Um, but they, they played really well, they defended well, um, and they basically had the Giants measure all day. And they wore white shorts. Dylan Moore had his best game for yeah. the club, had 20 possessions and four goals. Huge performance, backed up by Mitchell with another lazy 40, as he tends to yeah. do. And uh, Howe and Scrimshaw played really well for them as well. The power, on the other hand, coming off a little mini final against mm. Sydney, if a team they're possibly going to play against in the finals, even in an elimination final, is possible as well. They, it was an engaging battle, and then, uh, as we mentioned on the Drew Footy Show, Scott Lysette pulls out one of the better clutch goals we've seen this year. Is uh, he's not he's not a big goal kicker, he's not no. not the most skillful man, not a bad player, but um, that that goal on that angle was really tight, so he did really well. Do the Hawks have enough momentum, considering how they've played better this year, to knock off Port in Melbourne? They've been having upsets left, right, and centre half. Hawthorne, so um, yeah, I mean, can't write them off for that. It's going to be a bit of a, a tough game, but Port just need to show up and play their best footy, which at times they haven't really done this season, but I don't think they're going to drop this game to Hawthorne. I'm, I'm just going to tip Port Adelaide to win this one comfortably. They play Marvel pretty decent, so I think they'll get the, the job done here by 35 points. 35 points? Okay, I like it. I, I'm going to agree on the same basis what we said about Brisbane, Port Adelaide, for their critics, don't often drop games they're expected to win. Like, yeah. They're just kind of that consistent team. And on that basis, I think they'll they'll probably play a crappy sort of... I'm expecting like a dour game yeah. where Port Adelaide are just good. So I'll say they'll win by 11 points. 
Next up, we have Sydney versus West Coast at GMHBA Stadium. This That's was, a shitty venue for you. That's a stinker. Hey, so this <laughs> game was originally meant to be the SCG. Obviously, the COVID situation. Sydney get to choose where this game's been played. And at first, we were all like, oh, this might be at the MCG. This will play right in our hands. Love that. We suck at the SCG. Boom. Checkmate. Sydney says <laughs> GMHBA Stadium where we are, if possible, even worse than at the SCG. So, well played, Sydney. You've got us there. They've won the first part of the battle. Um, Twans were undone by Port Adelaide, as we touched on. Uh, they had the chance to win the game very late in proceedings, mm. but just couldn't quite get over the line in what would have been a really, really good win if they did. Buddy kicked four. He's got 1,000 goals within his sights now, um, which is exciting. You know, I would wouldn't be surprised if he ramps up on that basis. He's, he's within touching distance. Mills and Parker were obviously very good as well, um, and it could have been a really important win, but no shame in losing it, to be honest. Let's talk about the Eagles. They were exposed exposed badly in the wet conditions, and uh, that's not to say that we lost because of the rain, but as I said on the Drew Footy Show, we were um, we were really vulnerable in a game style that... Uh, that's not distracting. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, as soon as the, the game sort of hit ground level and mm-hmm. we couldn't play a marking style and it was contested, we were exposed for being a very one-dimensional side, which is true. We, we suck in the wet. But then when it fined up as well, the Bulldogs were clearly better. Mm-hmm. And I, as I said on the show, if the Eagles had brought their A game, probably still would have lost. So um, 55 points, a bit of a reality check in the sense that, yeah, we probably thought we were a little bit better than what we did yeah. up. But... Uh, uh, yeah, it hurts. And um, the, on the other hand, though, the Eagles do tend to lift after games like that. So yeah. it could, we could see a response. They're just a bit flaky, unfortunately. Who are you thinking? I don't know who to tip in this game. I've got so many tips for West Coast wrong this season. Too, yeah. Especially in like 50-50 games. Mm. I, I always pick them wrong. At GMHVA, you guys play that ground so shit. And Sydney usually have your number. They're good at GMHVA as well. Their own record is quite good. Tip them. The crowd's <laughs> not a factor, though. Nah, Which it's might not. be helpful. Sydney played well last week, but as of late, haven't really been in great form. This is going to be a, a tough game to tip, Jesse. It is actually this, really This hard. is definitely a subject to change sort of tip. And this is potentially a finals preview. Six versus seventh could be a week one finals preview. I want to tip Sydney. Fuck West Coast. Yeah, right. I can understand why people are tipping Sydney, but I think just the fact that the Eagles generally, when they ter- ter- uh, dish up an absolute turd game, not too many wall, times sort of we thing. don't come back, and mm. I think I think our team is better than Sydney's, uh, to be honest. So yeah. I think we should win. I I think I've tipped us three or four times, and we've lost this year, and I've only tipped us to lose once when we've won. So I'm probably just uh, consigning us to a loss here. I think I'll tip the Eagles, but I'm not confident at it. All right, lock them in right this there. Is... You tip the Eagles, I'll tip Sydney. All right, what's the margin? I'd say seven points. Seven points. All right, cool. Second last game of the round is Collingwood versus St. Kilda. This one is actually going to be really interesting to tip at the MCG. Uh, Pies lost the thriller to the Dockers in what was probably close to the match of the round, if not the match of the round. Plenty of individuals did well. You had Maynard play well, Adams, Crisp, Grundy, but it wasn't quite enough. If you look at the, the stats, all the Collingwood ones dominated mm. the fantasy, but yeah. ultimately, um, the, the, I think they couldn't buy a goal. Really. Yeah, Josh Thomas was really good as well. He was good, yeah. But other than he, um, the next two multiple goal scorers were Bianco and... Brody Grundy, so yeah. it shows that they just their forward line isn't quite clicking. Um, yeah. But we talked about that a lot. Really so, missed a goalie. Yeah, that's right. But he'll be back in this week. Oh, there you go. So that's that's something to note. He is definitely one of their best players. St Kilda coming off one of the more surprising results of the season, not just to upset Richmond, but to keep Richmond to two, two goals. goals. That's that's just. When you're St Kilda. Yeah, <laughs> when you're St Kilda. No, it's true. No, honestly, St Kilda um, have been up and down, but they haven't belted a really good team like mm. that uh, at all this year. So that's their best result of the season, no doubt. Uh, they obviously had um, Ryder and Marshall touch up uh, mm. Richmond's, you know, like young project boys. Young <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and Ryder and Marshall obviously gave first use all day to your Dunstan, Crouch and Steele. So they just feasted on Richmond um, and were too good. So... Uh, this is not a simple tip. I actually don't know who to tip here. Uh, who you got? Oh, the Battle of Mitch Ryan and Card, man. Mm. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I think I'll tip Collingwood. Collingwood were, were decent last week. Probably didn't get out of third, fourth gear. But when they have the momentum on their side, they, they capitalise. And they, they show that against Frio. That 50 that Maynard gave away re- really swung the game. So I think Collingwood, yeah, are a better side than St Kilda this season. St Kilda just haven't been able to do it consistently. At the MCG, where St Kilda won last week. I don't know. I just have more faith in Collingwood to win this game. But St Kilda should really be winning this. <laughs> the more you think about it, like yeah. the, the harder it gets. Mm. I'll say Collingwood. Gross. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll differ you with you here. I think St Kilda have earned the tip this week. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. But on the comparing the last two results, I know Dego is in. I think Collingwood should win, but I'll tip St Kilda. It's a tough one. Yeah, St Kilda by 23. Collingwood by... 
Don't say 14. 23. Okay. The final game of the round could quite easily be uploaded to Pornhub because the Bulldogs <laughs> are playing North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. Uh, last time they met, the Dogs absolutely massacred North yep. Melbourne by 128 points after I famously said they didn't have the scoring power <laughs> to, uh, to, to kick as many goals as they did, but they've definitely shut me up in that regard. Dogs were super impressive against the Eagles. As much of the narrative is around how the Eagles were pathetic, and they were, the Dogs were just absolute bullies in that, particularly in that midfield. Bont, for me, best player in the game. Mm-hmm. Three goals, 29 touches. One of the, not goals of the year, but probably goal of the round, uh, yeah. definitely. Norton kicked four, dominant in the air against the back line that really should be able to fancy their chances against the good aerialist with Barras and McGovern. Um, not nah, too good. Serious chance for the flag. And then you contrast, contrast that with North, who were... Um, a serious chance of the flag. Well, they're a serious chance of the spoon, <laughs> quite literally. Um, but they did come off a, a win against the Gold Coast Suns down in Tasmania, and we are definitely seeing some improved form from them as well. For sure. You've got to give credit for some improved results. The back line's going well, and guys like Simkin, LDU, and uh, Zerhard as well were pretty good last mm-hmm. week as well. So, yeah, there's a bit to like about North Melbourne yep. at the moment. I think they can be quietly satisfied with the, uh, with the current form. They've improved... But surely not enough to trouble the dogs no. here. I think this is the most simple tip of the round. Yeah, rounds. absolutely not. The Bulldogs are going to win this game, and they have plenty of scoring power to do so. Mm. Yeah, Norton, I said on the Drew Footy Show, flies without fear. Mm. He um, yeah, really attacks the ball inside fifty, just like he attacks seventeen-year-old boys at birthday parties. That's not real. He didn't attack me, just verbally. But no, nah, um, yeah, the Bulldogs looked probably one of the best games of their season yesterday, considering mm. it was against a, a top eight side away from home. Massive result. So the Bulldogs are going to get the job done here. Hopefully North give them a bit of a bit of a challenge, though. I'll tip the Bulldogs to win by 47. I'll say 65. Yeah. Dogs are in really good form. Just before we go, we do have a new final little segment uh, where we can show, uh, based on the comments and requests from last week, we can show the ladder what it would look like if we get all our tips right. I think we went different on two games this week. So I'll get up the squiggle ladder predictor. This is my top eight. Obviously not much is changing in that top four. Geelong still fifth uh, behind the teams above them there. But uh, West Coast, I biasly have winning against Sydney. They slide into the top six quite undeservingly. Richmond holding out Fremantle there in the top eight. The Saints, if I'm right, beating Collingwood. Uh, I have them up in 10th spot. So uh, bizarrely, they're actually kind of in the finals race. Mm. That's weird. I think that's just because some of the uh, other teams around them have, have faulted. What does your look like? Melbourne, Bulldogs, Lions, Port. So stand at top four. Geelong in fifth. I've got Sydney going up to sixth. Uh, the Coast Wet Toast Eagles going into eighth. Richmond slipping into seventh. Frio still ninth. Same amount of wins as West Coast. Happy days. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, GWS, Essendon, St. Kilda. Collingwood climbing up, so they're going to be neck and neck with St. Kilda, and then, yeah, the rest of the ladder is irrelevant. All right, there you go, guys. That is all our tips for yet another round. Let us know in the comments what you think we got right, what we think we got wrong, who's going to do better this week based on the different tips. Do make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Do go check out Drewzy's channel as well for the Drew Footy Show every Tuesday as well. comes out around the same time as this, so it should be up now, so go check that out. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.